but I look like a mountain man. My hair, I need a haircut. Look at that. I have a hair, I have a curl on my forehead and a curl going to the sky. That's not right. And look at my beard. It's like you could, you could put like birds could live inside my beard and raise a family and I wouldn't even know. So what are we going to do? We are going to talk about games, board games around the world. And so while I was doing research on board games, I, I had to decide if I was going to talk about the history of board games or or where certain board games came from. And, and I thought, yeah, that's a whole difficult topic, talking about the history of board games. I really just want to talk about the international games that are played around the world. And there's, and there's so many games that come from all over the world. But I just want to talk about games that might actually seem familiar to you, even though what they are called and how they are how they are known in their home countries might be very different. Does this look familiar? Well, we are going to start with the Middle East. The Middle East. This is a, this is a picture of a board game. Do you know what it's called? Actually, the original game in its original language was called Drafts. Yeah, that's true. Drafts. And, uh, uh, and where it comes from is it comes from a part of the Middle East, which is now known as Iraq. And it was uh, one of the first organized societies really, really organized uh, kingdoms in, in early, early, early human history called Mesopotamia. And this was a game that was very popular from that time and is still played today all over the world. But uh, it came from the Middle East and it's still played in the Middle East. And, and most importantly, this game, well, we call it chess, but but in its original language, it's called Drafts. It was the original game which influenced a lot of newer games, which we will uh, maybe talk about later uh, today, in later in this video, or maybe later videos. Um, so, okay, moving on from uh, this game, we're gonna talk about the next game. This is another game that is very popular today, but actually has just as long a history as chess, drafts, yeah? Um, and this game is called Senet. And even though it has uh, its origins in, in very, very early history of Egypt, it's still a very popular game today in Egypt. And if you look at how it's played, it is it is organized by squares. And each square has numbers, and the numbers correspond to where you can move certain game pieces. Now, if you think this game sounds familiar, if you're thinking of backgammon or baccarat, you are right. So this Egyptian game, which is still played today, very popular, uh, evolved into other very similar style games that are still a thousand years old, but this game is several thousand years old. So Senate, Senate. Okay, so I'm going to move away from Egypt and uh, Iraq and Iran. Again, there are a lot of games that come out of the Middle East, different countries of the, of the Middle East. But but I just wanted to focus more, mainly on board games, okay? So the, these videos are about board games. So I'd like to move a little bit into uh, into India. India, hmm. 
So if you remember, I talked a little bit about backgammon or chess. Well, this game is called Pachisi. Pachisi. And basically, it is a very original dice and um, uh, board game pieces combination game. Uh, Pachisi in, it is a very old Hindu word that means 25. And that is the highest number a player can get when throwing uh, the dice to indicate the most number of spaces one can move. So the most number of spaces one can move is 25 spaces on this board game. Here you can see it's made of cloth. Uh, sometimes it's made up of, out of a hardwood, but it's colored spaces. And the purpose of the game is try to get your game piece to the your opponent's side, a little bit like like chess, you know. Um, yeah. So if I was mentioning uh, drafts, drafts actually, yeah, I said chess. Actually, um, it'd be more it'd be more similar to something like checkers, right? So checkers and chess, you start to see some similarities to these board games. But this is one where they actually involve dice and, and moving pieces according to some dice. And another Indian game is called Ludo. This is this is a more modern board game. It's very definitely all of these games are modern games. They are played today. All of these games that I've been talking about, they are modern games. They are played today. But but this game, uh, Ludo, is actually an inspiration for a game we're going to talk about uh, in a little bit, which is the game of life. The game of life. Yeah, you are trying to move around a game board using dice in colored game pieces, except each person is a game piece. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Ludo basically actually um, is comes from the game I just told you about, which is Pachisi, but in a more structured format. And so if you get, if you remember the game of the game of life, well, th that's what this game is. But it, but it takes a lot of its inspiration from the original game. Uh, Pachisi. Now, here's a funny thing. Here's a funny thing, is uh, this game it, in in many places it's considered an English game. It's given an English name, and given English descriptions and and uh, how to play. It was given a very English way of playing this game, but actually no, it's from India. It's a pretty modern Indian game, but the British. Uh, ah, they they kind of took some took some uh, liberties, some freedoms with this game, hoping that nobody else in the world knew that it was an Indian game. So by the time you know we get to current era, when we're playing the game of life, you know a lot of a lot of Indians probably felt a little bit you know frustrated, like wait a minute, that's our game. What are you doing? Why, why are you calling it some strange name? That's so weird. I don't understand. That's so weird. Don't do that. Um, and this game is called Bausa Kwa Sahili. Bausa Kwa Sahili. And basically, it is Ludo meets backgammon. But instead of dice, you use seeds. So how you use the seeds, I'm not really sure. But anyway, this is a, this is a very popular board game in Africa and why this is important is so there's another game that is very popular in I think Colombia or Chile where people of all ages play this game okay Bausa they play this game but basically when you get to a certain age your society has sort of decided that this is just what you do in your free time. You know, on your lunch break, somebody will take out this game and you just start, it's this, this board game, you need a board, it folds up, it's got little pockets, but the pockets or holes in the, in the board in the board are actually used for playing, but they can also be used for storage. So it, it includes all of these things. It's seeds, 
It uses seeds, so it can be manufactured, or it can be just taken from, you know, a get to go to the grocery store to get some seeds. And it can and you just play a game. So, and everybody has a board. Everybody has a board. So, you know, when you're on your, on your work break, you just kind of break it open, and then you start playing with your coworkers. Or on a weekend, and you're bored, and... And you and your your wife or your partner have nothing better to do. You just break out this open. You break open this game, and everybody, and everybody pl- plays it. Um, it's just a very casual, very social game, but everybody plays it. Everybody just has sort of decided that's what you do. So it's a very social oriented, very simple game, very similar to backgammon, with a lot of heavy heavy influences like Ludo, and this is an African game. Yeah, I think that's enough uh, time talking about these games. Yeah, so I basically just just described games from the Middle East and India and Egypt. And let's talk a little bit about, about Asia and Europe, but that'll have to be for the next video.